Okay, uh, it's about time we got back on track and started uh, doing a little bit more kismet uh, in these videos. Uh, so the first thing that I want to show you is this little setup right here. Now I'm not going to go through this step by step in the, uh, the uh, setting up of this from scratch, but I will show you um, how this was constructed. Uh, just to show you what it looks like. Um, here it um, it just looks fairly static, but if we go into the game you can see that we have um, the color of this uh, texture um, switching between red and blue and we also have light being emitted um, uh, from this area which is uh, red and blue and is timed uh, to coincide with this texture swap over. So how did I um, create this effect? Well, uh, first I'm going to come down to the Bill and Bob pack, and this is where I um, uh, created my um, my textures. And I have a uh, a material here and a material instance constant. Uh, this material instance constant is based on this material, so I'll just go in here and uh, show you what this looks like. And um, at first it might look a little bit complex, uh, trust me, when you start looking at materials in the game, uh, there are a lot more complicated networks than, than this setup. Um, now there are two textures uh, that I have brought in, um, and here is this initial texture sample, which is called um, organic metal underscore bump and there is also a coinciding normal map which is organic metal underscore normal and these are the textures that I have used and these actually come with a UDK and so if I click on find object and content browser you can see that um, they are in fact uh, right here um, the, the bump map and the normal map and they're just under uh, GDC materials so I, um, I simply would select these um, and I've uh, shown uh, some of the material operations in the previous unit, uh, but I can hold the T key and click to bring in a texture sample of whatever I have selected in the content browser. Just delete that out because I don't need it. Um, and so I did that for the bump map and the normal map. Uh, now we'll just walk through this um, uh, this network, uh, you can see that we have, and it's probably easier if we start from this end, um, here we have a PANA um, uh, coordinate operator which is affecting the UVs um, of our texture sample and um, uh, the PANA is uh, plugged into time in fact I, I'm not sure that we actually need that, if we take that off um, yes, it, can, it still continues to pan, so we don't actually need this uh, time node, so I can delete that out. Um, and so we have a panner, um, which is uh, panning the texture sample, which is plugging into our bump offset, which is what we used in the last unit to um, create the illusion of depth. Uh, and the bump offset is plugging into the uh, new versions of the texture sample and normal map. As I said in the previous unit, you can't uh, plug directly from this, uh, an output directly uh, from a texture which is going into a node which is going back into that texture. Uh, so um, the bump offset is uh, panning slightly um, and you'll be able to see that the it is actually panning 0.2 in X and point 0.1 in Y, which means that it is traveling around the sphere twice as fast as it is traveling up the sphere, giving this sort of slow spiral effect. Um, and it's doing that um, basically one-fifth of a second and one-tenth of a second for those uh, values. Um, and that panning and bump mapping is also occurring here with the, um, uh, the UVs on our normal map. Um, and our texture, um, which is plugging into our specular and emissive. Um, now this um, particular material 
is set up as an additive texture and the lighting model I've used is um, anisotropic and I've also made it two-sided. I made it I made it two-sided because uh, if we come inside the sphere and it's not two-sided uh, we basically have nothing on the other side and so it sort of pops out of existence which is a little unrealistic because we will be walking through these in the game. So I've switched two-sided on and I think that's about the only things that I've changed. Um, yep. Uh, the opacity for our additive texture I've bumped up to 2. Um, it defaults to 1. Uh, now the um, the texture that I've been using is just the uh, basic bump map which is a uh, it's a grayscale image but technically this is a three channel uh, or four channel um, uh, file and so we've uh, we've brought this in and we've uh, we are multiplying um, this color or, or this bump map by itself to create a more contrasty version and then we were multiplying that by this node here which is a, um, a new color uh, which um, tints our emissive channel with this sort of uh, this yellowy color. Now the um, the reason that we have used this uh, param color um, instead of uh, a simple um, uh, vector, uh, a constant 3 vector or a constant 4 vector, is that um, this uh, param color, and you can find this under parameters, new vector parameter, uh, this, um, these nodes can actually be affected in Kismet, which is why why I've brought in one of these uh, these colors here. And so um, that's basically the um, the setup. Uh, I've also applied a sign to our base bump map style texture um, and applied that to distortion. Uh, that's what creates this sort of refracting um, sort of effect on the object here. So anything behind this object is actually refracted like it's passing through glass. Now uh, this param, um, this uh, vector parameter, um, I have given it a parameter name, color, and I've also given it a default value of yellow. The reason I've given it this default value is so that I can see when it has and has not been changed. Hopefully we shouldn't see this yellow in the game. And so I won't bother saving. Now if I just come back down to uh, my Bill and Bob and uh, let's have a look at the actual material instance constant that I created from this material. It is uh, quite a different sort of um, browser. It's not like the uh, texture browser or material browser. Uh, you can see that the parent is uh, that material that we, uh, that we have in um, that, that we constructed and we have one vector parameter value which is color and you'll notice that in the material instance constant uh, we have the color set to red and this is what um, what should show up initially in our uh, browser window and so uh, with that I um, I simply brought in a um, a new um, static mesh, uh, which has since been converted to a mover. Uh, but I uh, I just dragged the um, this material instance constant onto this uh, this mesh. Uh, I then um, uh, brought in a material instance actor. You can find these under actor classes and material instance actor and then I simply uh, right click and uh, add material instance actor here and uh, with this material instance actor the um, material instance I have linked it to that material instance which is applied to this mesh here and then um, with these selected I've come into Kismet and I have the material instance actor plugged into a matinee. And I'll get into this matinee in the uh, next video.